one of the most important topic in physics that is conservation of momentum so principle of conservation of momentum simply state that if there are a system of particle which are moving with uh, same velocities or different velocities whatever and if we calculate the sum of the momentum of all individual particles after that an event occur due to this event the velocities of all the particles may change and after that if we calculate the sum of the momentums of the individual particles we get this is equal to the previous sum that is called conservation of momentum so conservation of momentum of a particular system doesn't change okay for example this is a system in which this is a particle number 1 and this is a particle number 2 and this is the whole system system suppose this is mass m1 moving with velocity u1 this is mass m2 moving with velocity u2 then what will be the momentum total momentum of this system so we calculate momentum of this momentum of this and <coughs> so total momentum is equal to sum of the momentum of all the individual particles but here here there are uh, only two bodies two particles so we write m1 u1 plus m2 u2 okay one important things is that we know that force can change the momentum of the force we write here external force can change the momentum of a system of particle okay and what i'm saying that momentum doesn't change then uh, when this statement is applicable when force is zero okay so statement of conservation of momentum is that if uh, there are no external force applied on the system if there are if there are no external force applied on the system then momentum of the system doesn't change doesn't change means remains constant remains conserve okay now in this system there are two particles and uh, total momentum is m1 u1 m2 u2 so after an event that uh, e1 is greater than u2 then it will collide to this so this is for before collision an event is occur that is collision after that one moves with velocity v1 and two moves with velocity v2 after the event so we write here this is the condition after collision this is m1 this is m2 then total momentum of this system is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 now this particle apply force on this but this is the internal force because this is the member of this system if we apply force from here on this then this agent is not a system of uh, is not a member of the system so if we apply force from here 
on this body or this body, it will be external force. But this part will apply force on this or this part will apply force on it. This is the internal force because these two particles are the member of this particular system. So this is the internal force. Then we can see for this particular system, external force is zero. External force is zero. And if external force is zero for this particular uh, system and an event occur that is collision, then momentum before collision that is this and momentum after collision this, these two quantities should be equal. This is the conservation of momentum. Then we can write external force is zero, then uh, momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. If external force is zero, then momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision and momentum before collision is m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 whatever be the momentum before event of the system that is equal to the momentum of the total system after the event this is conservation now we can derive this statement by second law of motion mathematically we simply know this will be proof so now we know second law of motion is given by it is force is equal to dp by dt d dt of p the time rate of change in momentum that rate and that is equal to force now in our statement there is no external force so this is the external force now if we write we can write here p is momentum and t is time okay now if uh, f external external force is zero then what will happen dp upon dt is equal to zero and we know that for a constant quantity differentiation is equal to zero so here is the p differentiation is with respect to time that is equal to 0 then p must be a constant quantity so we can write here p is equal to constant p is equal to constant means initial momentum is equal to final momentum okay so one more example of momentum conservation of momentum that is recoiling of a gun So, we can take here is a gun bullet system, as a trigger and bullet is here B. Initially gun and bullet both are at rest then its momentum is equal to 0. We write here P i that is uh, for initial momentum after the firing gun this bullet moves with velocity v b that is velocity of the gun mass of the bullet so the velocity of bullet and this is the mass of bullet and this is mass of gun then experimentally we see that guns moves in backward direction and this force is the internal force because this bullet this trigger all of the member of this particular system so this force is internal force is not external force it means now we can say that external force for this uh, system for the firing gun and uh, external force for this system is equal to zero so 
and when external force is zero then momentum is constant that means initial momentum is equal to final momentum so momentum is a vector quantity if it's move with velocity v b and its momentum is m b v b now let us suppose this is 50 kilogram meter per second square then gun moves in backward direction opposite to the bullet and having the momentum that should be equal to 50 kilogram meter per second square meter per second square so momentum of bullet is 50 momentum of the gun is 50 in opposite direction so total momentum of this system is again zero this is 50 and this is 50 vector sum is zero so now we can say momentum is equal to um, initial momentum is equal to final momentum this is the requiring of gun so we have to understand that if there is a no external force well, um, internal force uh, uh, maybe, maybe internal force is present but if external force is zero momentum is constant and this is the mag mathematical uh, proof of this <coughs> one more example that uh, a nucleus is rest in the laboratory frame of reference this is the nucleus this is nucleus and uh, explosion of uh, this nucleus occur and it will break in two parts one is called daughter nucleus one is called parent nucleus this is the single nucleus and uh, it will break in two parts daughter and parent now we have to prove that this daughter nucleus moves in uh, the opposite direction of the parent nucleus okay so we can prove easily that this is the nucleus and this is the daughter nucleus and this is the parent nucleus this is uh, at rest in the laboratory frame of reference then we can write momentum of this system is equal to zero now let this is md and this is mp mass of the daughter nucleus mass of the parent nucleus now let after uh, uh, breaking after disintegrating uh, it has velocity v p and it has velocity v d so external force is zero or not answer is external force is zero because the whole force is the internal force whatever be the okay so in this case external force is zero no one apply force on this nucleus it will uh, break uh, due to internal force whatever be the internal force so if external force is zero if uh, total momentum of this system is zero before, before disintegration this should be equal to the momentum of this system that is momentum of daughter uh, nucleus plus momentum of parent nucleus that is equal to zero because initial momentum is zero and no force is applied on it then we can write momentum of daughter nucleus and momentum of parent nucleus that is equal to zero then we can write md vd is equal to minus mp okay we write here p mp vp then vd is equal to minus mp upon md vp this is the mass basically ratio of their mass then here is a negative sign what does it indicate that these two velocities these two velocities are opposite to each other opposite to each other it means daughter nucleus moves in opposite direction to the 
parent nucleus. Okay, so that's all about conservation of momentum.